Hello, Michael Mann here from Bike Social. Welcome to sunny-ish Spain. Uh, the sun promises to be out a little bit later. We've got a bit of drizzle for now. Anyway, that's not important. What is important is this. It's the 2023 Yamaha YZFR 125. So it's 125cc, so it's learner legal um, sports bike, which has been oh so popular in Yamaha's range. Not quite po as popular as perhaps as the MT125, which is the identical bike, but sort of the naked version, same chassis, same engine, same gearbox, blah, blah, blah. So the R125 was first introduced into the range or this, this iteration of it in 2008. And here we are several versions later on. And we have uh, Euro 5, uh, was came out in 2021. And this is the updated model. And just before we get into the, the riding part of this uh, video, I'm just going to give you some of the updates, some of the primary updates for this year, for the 2023 model, really, it's all down to track control, which you can turn on or off. And you've got, I keep looking down to it, but it's a five inch color TFT screen. Very similar to the, to the sort of the more, the bigger uh, versions of the R. Uh, series in Yamaha's range so it's a very clear screen but it's very grown up it's sort of you know the, the model has matured and you've also got a slightly different handlebar positions it's more slightly more open uh, and it to give you a sportier riding position sportier in fact than the R3 some might say we'll find out when we ride it uh, styling wise it's supposed to represent the R7 with the with a more aerodynamic uh, front fairing uh, and also, yeah, traction control, screen, uh, handlebars and fairing. Yeah, that's that's it. And on this particular model, this specific model, bike right here, these uh, tank pads and also the Akrapovich exhaust are optional extras. You could also have uh, an optional extra quick shifter, up only, not down. Good. All right, let's go. Welcome on board the 2023 YZFR125 and the jolly fine time I think we're going to have. This is the outskirts of Barcelona, which is um, but the scene of where the one, two, three, four, five of us, plus guide rider, plus tail rider. Tell you what, though, these brakes on this bike are really good. And there's a very, very light, so we've got little in the way of bulk teeny. The phrase is often used you can have more fun on a small bike because you've got to really earn your rewards. You've got to work them hard. Great. There's a mass smile of people. Of course, uh, what goes really without saying, but I'll say it anyway, is that this the 125 is a frugal. They're very, very economical. You could get well over 100 miles to the gallon. Uh, I should be more specific in my review online where I can do the math. These brakes are terrific. Downside, is that the brake lever is not span adjustable, so it's it's a fair. I mean, I've got knob fingers on, right? But uh, if you haven't, you might find it concerned. Yes, this screen is really rather neat. It's very very easy to pick out the and you know, the relevant information. What we won't be able to do today is test it at night time, so I won't be able to tell you what it looks like at night. But it seems at the moment very bright. But what it also does is it connects to your app on your phone. So you get a free Yamaha app. It's called My Ride. Uh, when you connect it, you, you get your notifications on the screen. If you get text calls, whatever, you do anything about it. But it also records your ride. I tell you, other than the brakes, which are very good, suspension's terrific too. Non adjustable. KYB. Oh, wait, run down. We're all look at him. He's tucked. Uh, I tell you what else we're doing today. I don't know if I mentioned it already. We're taking this on track. So we're going to a, a place that's outside uh, the west of Barcelona, which is kind of where we're heading now. So the engine has been untouched for 2023 and that's fine because it's already fairly bulletproof. It has a capacity, a peak, peak capacity of 11 kilowatts, which is about 14.7 brake horsepower at, a, uh, and that's up at 10,000 RPM, 
which makes it very revy. It would be. It's a single. But that's the capacity it can be. That's the highest it can be uh, to fit in with the criteria for a learner bike, for a learner legal bike. Um, and it's also got the variable valve actuation. That means it's got twin cams, which in plain English kind of means you don't have to have a compromise between great acceleration or top end speed. You can have both in this particular, in this engine, because at 7,400 RPM, it switches from that, from, from it switches cams essentially, um, which means that you've got uh, you know, a, a real breadth of sort of engine use. So you can use it as like, to get off the line for a 125, but you can also use it at the top end speed. See, this, this thing will do, this will break the UK speed limit easily. It'll do more than 70 miles an hour. And what you have got, of course, is the aerodynamics here as well, so you can get tucked in. So Yamaha, of course, sell a bucket load of 125s, whether it's the MT, whether it's the R. And that's kind of the reason why they go MotoGP racing or why they go World Superbike racing. It's purely about a branding exercise to sell these bikes because they're popular the world over. And they've sold something like 370,000 uh, of the 125s since the MT range uh, was first introduced. But this is the R. It's got the aerodynamics. It's got the sportiness of it all. And today we're going to take it on the street. Uh, we're also going to take it on the track. And we're going to take a little look and see how it gets on uh, into, for its sportier credentials. Which is a, a bit odd because for, for us in the UK, you can't take a bike uh, with an A1 license on a track unless you hire, it, you, you hire the track yourself. Or you get involved in one of those sort of free tech uh, championships. The difference in the screen between this, so the screen of the MT125 and the R125, they're both, they're identical, but the R has got a track mode on the uh, screen itself. So it gives you a lap timer, interestingly, um, uh, but it also gives you a, uh, from 6,000 RPM upwards, so it doesn't, it doesn't show you anything below. Yeah, so the engine is 25 single cylinder, but it's it had the variable, valve actuation vva introduced to it back in 2020 and that means it's got two different cams which means there's no compromise now between either having a fast acceleration or top end so there's a switch at about seven and a half seven thousand four hundred rpm uh, so they told us at the technical presentation where that the, the there is a change in cam and you can you could kind of access both parts so you do get the acceleration you do get the top end which is great for a bike like this because you want to use all of that you want the the shorter revs the the quicker acceleration in and around town it's a great system really rather clever and uh, perfect for learning on so there we have it we've ridden not we why i i have ridden on the track i've ridden on the road We've ridden in the mountains. Uh, we've really, I believe the phrase is stretched the cable of the little 125. Worked it hard, revved it hard. Uh, the red line is up at 11,000 RPM. Peak power is 10,000 RPM. Peak torque is 8,000 RPM. And yes, we have challenged it. So what was good about the track, first of all, was despite us not being able to take it on track in the UK legally, uh, it was good to see how sporty the bike can be. You know, there was, a, there was guys there decking out the pegs, which is why they took the hero blobs off. And you could really throw it around a bit. It was very precise. Nimble is a funny word. It's often overused in, in motorcycle journalism, but it was, it's a good description to, to talk about how well the bike changes direction. It's very light, so it's kind of standard that that's going to be the case. 142 kilos wet. Um, and the tyres are excellent. They're Michelin Pilot Street tyres. And they're very, very good, both on track and on road. They're very complimentary uh, and suit the bike very well, as does the suspension as well, interestingly. Um, I found that very comfortable. The It didn't rebound too sharp. It wasn't too saggy. There was a fair few, it's certainly in and around the city, there's a fair few speed bumps that we, we sort of hit deliberately at speed in some cases. But the bike handled it nicely. It was very stable in a straight line too. So I can praise it for its athleticism and its riding ability uh, and the components so for the price point which is 5.3 in the UK available in the dealerships now um, but on a PCP deal you put £1,100 down and over 36 months it's £75 uh, a month which is which is such a, a, a small amount of money really for a bike like this in terms of its riding position uh, the seat is sort of canted forwards a little bit 
So you do tend to end up, you know, really kind of in the tank. And it's only when you purposefully move yourself backwards and you have got a bit of space to move yourself backwards to give you that, 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 that bit more space to sit in. So in terms of its bar position, we've talked about it earlier on, but the, this, this, this new uh, sort of splayed out uh, handlebar position gives it that sportiness, but it's not uncomfortable. It's a little risky. It's not that bad, especially for the, the, the type of riders that, that are going to be interested in this. One thing I would say is, uh, like the MT125, is the, the brake lever is not span adjustable. So if you've got long fingers like me, you're fine because you can you kind of reach it nicely, but there's no adjustability there. So that's something to, to note. Also worth noting, I'm six foot tall. I'm 14 and a half stone. So I'm not exactly the ideal. I'm 43 years old, I'll have you know. So I'm not the ideal demographic for, for, for R1s. But I never felt uncomfortable on this. It really, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good bike to sit in. It does feel uh, highly entertaining. So yes, you're going to work the revs. It's a high revving machine. It's very entertaining. It's very, very frugal, as you'd expect from, from a 125. So in terms of its MPG, uh, so Yamaha claim around about 140 MPG, which is incredible, and it's achievable. Uh, they have to, It has to be achievable for them to claim it. But I got it down to a, just under 100 MPG, and that's really going some, uh, I think to get it down that far but overall look i think it's a great learner bike it's a great way to get into the range it's uh, it's styling is is pretty cool it looks you know like it's a uh, bigger capacity more powerful uh, stable mates um i am going to go and get to the dry and rescue the cameraman as well uh, so you can read the full review at bikesocial.co.uk